kids. Happy Saturday morning to you. Um, I'm here in the library again with another great book for you. Today's book is called Stanley's Party. This is a really great book if you ever wondered what your pets might be doing when you're not at home. So here we are with Stanley's Party, uh, written by Linda Bailey. Stanley knew he wasn't supposed to sit on the couch, but his people went out a lot and they never came home before midnight. So one night, Stanley began to wonder what would happen if he sat on the couch while they were gone, just for a minute. He put one paw on the couch and waited. Nothing happened. He put a second paw up. Slowly, Stanley dragged his whole huge body onto the couch. He sat there nervously listening. He waited for someone to yell, Stanley, off the couch. But no one said a thing. So Stanley lay down. The couch was more comfortable than he'd ever dreamed. Stanley stretched out his legs. He put his paws up on the cushions. He sprawled and squirmed and sniffed the leather trim. The couch was wonderful. All that evening, Stanley lolled and lounged on the couch. Just before midnight, he remembered his people. He straightened the cushions, brushed away dog hair, and hopped off the couch. When his people came home, he was waiting at the door. Good dog, Stanley, they said. Ruff, said Stanley, wagging his tail. Stanley felt terribly clever. He was so pleased with himself that the next night he decided to try something new. He had noticed that when his people sat on the couch, they often listened to music. Stanley had seen how they got it. He pushed some buttons with his nose. A moment later, music filled the room. Stanley was entranced. His body began to sway. His feet began to move. Soon, Stanley was waltzing around the room. When the music changed, he tried a cha-cha and a tango. He even did a bit of ballet. Stanley danced up a storm that night. He didn't stop until just before midnight. Then he turned off the music and tidied the couch. When his people came home, he was sitting on the living room floor. Good dog, Stanley, they said. Bark da bark bark, said Stanley. On the third night, Stanley broke into the fridge. It wasn't hard. He just pushed his nose firmly into the rubber seal and the door popped open. There was a lasagna in there that he'd been watching for days. It didn't last long. After it was gone, Stanley licked the plate clean and put it in the sink. When his people came home, he was lying on his dog bed. Good dog, Stanley, they said. Burp, said Stanley. Stanley couldn't believe his new life. Now, he didn't mind at all when his people went out. As soon as they left, he sat on the couch. He sashayed and shimmied to the music. He nibbled and noshed from the fridge. I'm having so much fun, thought Stanley. But after a couple of weeks, he realized that something was still missing. And one day when Stanley's people took him to the dog park, he figured it out. He was tired of having fun alone. Stanley trotted over to his best friend, Alice. How'd you like to come over to my house this evening? Said Stanley in dog talk. What for? Asked Alice. We could sit all around on the couch, said Stanley. Put on some music, do a little dancing, maybe have a snack. Sounds great, said Alice. What sounds great, said Oscar, coming up to join them. Before Stanley knew it, he had invited Oscar too, and Mabel, and Digger, and Gassy Jack. He invited two more dogs on the way home, and all the dogs he invited talked to other dogs, and those dogs talked to other dogs, and those dogs talk to still other dogs. Word is traveling fast. 
That night, right after Stanley's people left, the dogs began to show up. At first, they came in twos and threes. Then they arrived in packs. Some of them were Stanley's friends, but a lot more were strangers. Stanley wasn't worried. The more the merrier, he said. It wasn't long before the house was jammed with every kind of dog you can imagine. Shaggy dogs, bald dogs, dogs with wrinkles, dogs with fleas, humongous dogs, weensy dogs, dogs with floppy ears. They filled the rooms. They packed the stairs. They flowed out onto the porch and lawn. Drooling dogs, dainty dogs, dogs that needed a bath. Anyone hungry? asked Stanley, popping the fridge door open. Dogs poured into the kitchen. Help yourselves, said Stanley. Soon, the fridge was bare. Anyone care for some music? asked Stanley. He put on some rock and roll. The dogs went wild. They stomped, they boogied, they bebopped and jived. They twisted and jitterbugged and mashed. They danced until their paws were sore. They danced till the whole house shook. Who do you think danced hardest of all? Stanley. It was the best doggone party a dog ever had. It was also the only night ever that Stanley's people came home early. At first, they didn't say anything. Then they said together very loud, Stanley, bad dog. All the dogs except Stanley had to go home. Stanley helped his people clean up. It took two whole days. After that, whenever Stanley's people went out, they took Stanley with them. Stanley didn't mind. He went out a lot and he never came home before midnight. As for the party, well, this all happened a long time ago, but in Stanley's neighborhood, the dogs still talk about that night. And the dogs that were there told other dogs and those dogs told still other dogs. The story spread until dogs all over the country heard it. Then dogs all over the world. And now wherever dogs gathered from Turamura to Timbuktu, they tell the story of Stanley's party. If you don't believe me, ask your dog. Thank you for joining me this Saturday morning. I hope you enjoyed our story. I hope you are all doing well and know that I am missing each and every one of you very much. Um, stay healthy, stay active, and as always, read a good book. Until next time.